Hey everybody, this is Jack Frew, SharePointJack.com and at SharePointJack on Twitter. Today we're going to talk about a simple PowerShell logging function and also the start transcript and stop transcript functions for basically for logging what's going on in your PowerShell scripts. Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and we're going to go into our C drive here on our server. And I like to operate out of a script folder. So I'm going to create a new folder called scripts. And then for our kind of master templates, I'm going to create another folder here. I'm going to call it underscore masters. You could call it underscore templates or whatever you want. And what we'll do is we'll right click in here and we'll create a new file. It's going to be a text file. And we'll call this logging master.ps1. We can get rid of that txt extension there. Okay. I use Notepad++ as my editor. Notepad++ is absolutely free and uh, it's got some nice color syntax highlighting. So it's what I got used to. So I'm just going to right click and say edit with Notepad++. You can see it's also very fast. I like that about it. Now what we'll do is let's go over to SharePointJack.com. I'm already on this uh, blog post here for the for the blog. Uh, I'm sorry for the PowerShell logging. But let's say that you didn't know where that was. So we'll just pretend you came to the home page. We'll go to this listing of all posts on SharePointJack.com. I'll just use the find feature in my browser, Control F, and I'll type in the word logging. And we can see that it identified for us which post had the word logging in it. So go ahead and go there, and there it is. And now this is what it would look like if you just visited for the first time. Now, I want to copy and paste all this code, and it turns out the easiest way to do that is just come over here to expand code. It kind of changes it, and it tells you to hit Control-C to copy it. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now we'll go over to our um, Notepad++, and we'll just hit Control-V and paste that in. There we go. And now let's go ahead and save that. And let's just test it and make sure that it works. So we'll go back to PowerShell here. And we'll go into CD, I'll type in SC, and I'll hit Tab for scripts, and hit Enter. And then I'll type in CD. And the masters folder we created with an underscore, so I'm going to type underscore Tab. There we go. And now this is called Logging Masters. I'll type in L, and I'll hit Tab. And there we go. And that outputted itself. And if I'm not mistaken, based on what is in the script here, there should be a file name called Your Log File Name Goes Here, along with the date and time. So let's go ahead and check that out in our file system here. Let's just go up to the C drive. And there it is. It's called your log file name goes here. And it's got the output that we wanted it to have, right? So I don't need that anymore. Let's go ahead and delete that. Now, because this is going to be a master and we want to reuse this a few times, I sometimes like to clean these things up. So what I'm going to do here is let's just kind of, uh, let's just get rid of a couple of these comment lines that we, we wouldn't really need once we understood what the script was doing. Let me uh, clean that up a little bit there. And we'll clean up this here, and we'll clean up all the examples. We don't need those. You can, you know, that's just me. So you could leave them, but there we go. And we want all that stuff there. Okay. So now we've got a nice, simple, um, there we go. Nice, simple logging script that we can copy and paste. So let's go ahead and show how we would use this in a script that we were writing. Okay. So I've got this thing here. Now uh, let's go back to our scripts folder here. And let's create a new script. And we'll call this new script dot ps1. And let's just uh, start the script off with, let's say we're going to do uh, web apps equals get SP web application. Um, and then let, let's get just one web app. So we'll say select first one. And then I guess we can change this. It doesn't need to be web apps plural anymore. It could just be web app. And then what we want to do here is we want to output uh, web app dot URL. So that's our fancy new script without logging. So let's go take a quick look at that. Let's, um, let's run that here. We'll just go back to the scripts directory and we'll run new script. And there's the output that we want. However, we've not got any logging yet. So you've gotten kind of a start on your script and now you want to put some logging in. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and grab all of this right here. We'll copy it, we'll come over here, and uh, I'll show you some technique that I use. These functions have to come before I ever use them. So if I wanted to put this web URL in the log down here, I can say log web URL like I did there. Um, and I can even give it a color, like we'll give it uh, yellow, right? As long as I put the function name on top like it is here, this will work just fine. Log has been defined. So let's just let's just show that. Here we go. And we'll just up arrow. There we go. And you can see we've got the output in yellow. However, 
a lot of times I like to keep my functions down at the bottom because I find that it's a little clearer for me to read that the logging's kind of, you know, it's kind of canned. I don't need to know what that does anymore. I, you know, I understand it, but we'll run into a problem when we do this here. Let me just show you this now. The logging's at the bottom and we got this big error. The term log is not recognized as the name of a commandlet, whatever. So you might get this error in your own stuff. So here's an easy workaround for that. If we just surround our code that we want to run in another function. So let's say function main and we'll just surround that code in some brackets there and let's get this cleaned up a little bit it doesn't have to be cleaned up but uh you know ah didn't want to do that let's uh there we go we wanted to indent it like that um and then all we have to do so we have one function and we have another function and now at the bottom we just need one line of code and that's the code that starts one of the functions right so now the code's going to run through it's going to assign the log file to the log file variable this is global by the way and then that means that that log file variable is available inside of our other functions, right? So that's why I left that on top. It's going to look at main, but it's not going to do anything with it. It's going to look at function log. It's not going to do anything with it. And then at the very bottom, it's going to say, I need to run this main function. And it'll come up here and run main. It's going to run log. Everything's going to work just great. I'll, I'll just show you that right now. So let's go uh, CLS, up arrow, and there we go. Now we should have some logging. So let's go see uh, whether we've got, we should have a whole directory of these at this point. Let's go back to the C drive. And let's go scroll down. Here we go. And the most current one is this one here. And there you go. There's our output. Very nice. Okay. Now, no discussion on logging wouldn't be complete if we didn't talk about this command called start transcript and stop transcript. Okay. Now, there's a caveat here. Start transcript and stop transcript, I'm told, don't work in the PowerShell ISE. So if you like to use the ISE as your editor, then, uh, then this isn't going to work. But this is really handy. So let's come ahead here in our file and let's we're going to show both of these so i'm going to say start dash transcript and then i'm going to say path and we'll call this my txt and then at the very end i'm going to say stop transcript there we go okay so Let's just take a look at what this is going to do. It's going to do almost the same thing, except for start transcript has some additional information to it. So let's just go ahead and look at that there. We'll just uh, up arrow and we'll run our script one more time. And you see what we've now added to the output. We've got a line that says the transcript was started, a line that says that it was stopped. It tells us where the file ended up being. Let's go look at that file because that file's got some extra information. So this is really neat. Well, that was actually in the scripts directory and there's our transcript right there. Now you can see that I just used the name of a text file. So um, I didn't put the date and time in that one like I did with the other ones, but you can see here, there's our output right there. And it's got uh, you know a starting time and a start ending time, all that stuff. Very, very handy. There's one more reason that the transcript is handy and there might be a reason that you'd want both. Okay, let me show you this, this little problem here. So on my new script that I've got, and we should have that in the editor right here, Let's create an error. So you see here, I've got this select first one. If I get rid of the one, I know for a fact that PowerShell is gonna throw an error and say, you know, I'm missing something. So watch what happens now without the one there when I rerun this command here. I'm just clear the screen and we'll run the script. And you see, we've got this big error message in here, right? So now if we go back and we look at our two logs, so the, let's first look at that, that log here. This is the one from right here. Uh, that's the one we want to see. Not for, not for now. And you can see my log file didn't generate any output at all, right? But if I go to the transcript file, and that was in the scripts directory, and we look at that, we can see in the transcript directory that our error message and everything came right across. So uh, normally, I guess, you could ask yourself, well, why would you use the logging function instead of the transcript function? I think it really is a matter of taste. If you're using the ISE to run these things, transcript doesn't work there, so you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be able to take advantage of that. All right, so we saw two different ways of logging in your script. Start transcript and stop transcript is a great choice if you're running things from the command line. It captures all the output, including error messages. If you're running things from the ISE, you can do a custom logging function, and we showed that too. I hope one of those helps you out. Please follow me on Twitter. I'm at SharePointJack there. And visit my website, SharePointJack.com.